All right, welcome back to the color switch tutorial series in Construct 3. In the last video, we set up uh, some game over logic as well as our little scoring system here. So also in the scoring group, I'm going to add our level up logic. So I am going to add an event, say system uh, compare variable and I want to compare the score is greater than, uh, let's do greater than or equal to, we set our level up up here to zero in the uh, global variable, but inside the initialize group, we set it to 10. So we know that every 10, uh, every 10 scores, we are going to um, make everything a little more difficult. So I'm just going to type in that variable name, which is level up. So that will get that number for us. Hit done. So let's add an action. Let's uh, pick system and set value of ring speed to whatever the ring speed happens to be. So ring speed variable and then I want to add so plus let's say 25 so up here in initialize we said to set the ring speed to 250 which is how it's been going each time we test it so once you get uh, 10 points it will increase it to 275 and it'll keep increasing it by 25 each time so we want to also increase how fast it spawns. So let's add an action system set value of spawn speed to spawn speed. Now this time we want to decrease the amount of time in between uh, spawns. So I am going to say minus 0.1 because if you remember up here in initialize we said spawn speed 1.2 seconds. So every 10 scores we are going to decrease it by one tenth of a second. And it doesn't sound like much but once you get up to 50 and 60, uh, 50 and 60 points you're looking at half a second versus a full second. We also want to change uh, our level up variable because right now we're saying if the score is greater to or equal equal to or greater than level up which is 10 do this but we want to keep doing it so let's add more to level up so system and I'm going to say uh, set value to whatever level up happens to be at that time so pick level up variable and let's say level up so right now it's set at 10 so this is going to say 10 plus 10 more. So now this becomes 20. So when the score reaches 20, we're going to add 25 more to ring speed, subtract 0.1 from whatever spawn speed happens to be, and add 10 more to level up, which makes this 30 at that point. So when score gets to 30 or more, we'll just keep doing this, and this will loop uh, infinitely until the player loses. And it won't take long because once it starts going really fast, uh, it, it gets kind of confusing. So the, dif uh, the difficulty increases pretty quick that way. All right. I think that is it for the coding of this game. We have one more thing to do, and that's going to be our background. Uh, actually, let's preview this first. In fact, uh, let's preview this in the debug. So if you hit this little arrow down, we can go to debug layout. And I'm going to stretch this out so we can see what's going on here. And I want to come down here to uh, our global variables. You see our spawn speed and our score and our ring speed and all that. This reads what our variables are. So I'm going to start playing and I'll leave my arrow right there so we can see it. And I died again. Okay. 
I'm going to play for real this time. There's a blue, and I'm not inside the window. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to get it right. Okay, we got blue, switch it to red. Now, if you're keeping an eye on those global variables down there, once I get to 10, which is now, you can see that our spawn speed changed to 1.00 or 1.09999, which is one second is basically what it's reading out. See, it says 1.2 right now, or it reads out to 1.1, sorry. So there's 10, it's 1.1 because we subtracted 0.1 from it. Also, our uh, spawn, uh, the speed in which the rings travel also increased by 25, and we just had another level up, and there's another level up. So you can see by reading the debug that all these numbers are changing with the, uh, the math that we did inside the event sheet. All right. Let's uh, create that star field background and we'll be done. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a group, and I'm just going to call this background stars. And I'm going to move it up underneath initialize and add an event. Actually, first, let's go to the layout. Let's uh, double click anywhere and add a sprite. And we can place it anywhere over here. And let's resize to uh, five by five. And I'm gonna zoom in and with the pencil tool and a white color, I'm just gonna put one dot right in the middle. Let's exit out of that. Let's rename it uh, star. And hop back over to the event sheet. And let's add, uh, let's add an event. Let's go to system. And if we come down here to loops and pick repeat, and I want this to repeat 100 times. And what, what are we going to make it repeat 100 times? Well, we'll add an action, system, create object, and that object is the star. And we want it on layer, I'm gonna, put this on the background layer. And then the x value is going to be, we're going to use the random function again. So random, and I want it to be the width and height of the viewport. So I'm going to say from the x value from the 0 to 480, which is the width of our viewport. So 0 comma 480. Make sure that those numbers are in parentheses. And then for the y value, we'll do random. Uh, that is 0, 0,854. And I'll show you what that looks like. And right away, we have several problems. And what is going on there? Oh, I bet. OK, over here on layout, there's our star. Let's click on our star object. OK, first off, uh, I have to unlock the background. Then we can click on our star. And I'm going to change it to, actually, I want to leave the star on the background. And uh, I can see that the origin point is way off. So I'm going to go into the object, the sprite, click on origin, and put it right in the middle. There we go. And then I can go back and lock the background layer again. And back in the project panel, I'm going to go ahead and move that into my sprites folder. And then on the event sheet, uh, let's see, we have 480 by 8. That should fix that. There we go. All right. So we obviously don't want that many stars, but what it's doing is uh, every tick of the game, it's randomly creating a hundred stars on the screen. But I only want it to have 100 stars, period. So let's double click on the event to add a condition, and I'm going to pick system, 
and trigger once while true. And let's move that above that. Let's play that again. There we go. There's our 100 stars. And with our, uh, not particles, sprites, with our star object selected and our background unlocked. I guess I'll just leave that unlocked. Okay, our star selected. Let's go to behaviors, add a new behavior, and give it the bullet behavior. And then let's add another behavior and give it the wrap behavior. So bullet and wrap. And over here in the bullet behavior, I'm going to give it a speed of zero, uh, untick set angle, and that should be good. Over here in our event, we are going to add an action with the sprite star, come down to bullet, set the angle of motion to 90 degrees. We want it to go straight down like we're racing through space. Then I'm going to add another action. Go to sprite, star, scroll down to bullet, and I want to set the speed. We're going to use the random function again, so random, and I'm going to say between uh, 20, 50, and done. And I'm actually, I think I'm going to move the speed up above the motion. All right, so let's preview that. There we go. So we have a random movement of the stars, so it kind of gives it a little depth. But one of the other things I want to do is the stars in the background that are moving slower, I don't want them to be as in focus. I want them to kind of be somewhat blurry. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add an action, say sprite, star, and I want to, whoops, I want to set the size. Set size. So for the width, I want the star dot width, and I'm going to multiply that times uh, star dot bullet dot speed. And then I'm going to divide that by 20. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the height. I'm going to say star dot height, star dot height times star dot bullet, uh, bullet dot speed. And I'm going to divide that by 20 as well. So that's going to take the width of our star and it's going to multiply it times however fast that particular star is going. So the faster it's going, the bigger it's going to be. All right, I'm also going to do that with the opacity. So let's add an action, sprite, star, set opacity. And I'm going to say uh, star dot bullet dot speed. And I'm going to multiply that by uh, 1.5. So let's preview that and see what that looks like. So there we go. We have some kind of smaller, uh, not so bright stars moving in the background. And our larger, brighter, more defined stars are moving uh, faster in the foreground. So it gives it a little depth. Uh, this can be used in, like, if you have a space shooter game or any kind of background that you need a moving star field like that. A uh, pretty cool little effect. Helps add a little. Uh, you can also mess with, uh, mess with these numbers, like divide it by less or more. And uh, you can also uh, change the speed, the random speed, to uh, faster or slower speeds and while using uh, this equation as well. So yeah, cool little, cool little trick there. Oh, didn't want to do that. All right.
I believe that is the game. I'm going to make everything organized and look pretty, and I think that is it. So I'm going to save it, and that is the tutorial series for the Color Switch game. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. Uh, I enjoyed making this game. I certainly enjoy uh, explaining how I made the game for others to learn how to do it. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know. I have a couple more little tutorial series set up that I just got to record them and get them uploaded. And I hope to see you in those next series. Show some love, hit that, that thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and if you have any suggestions of what type of game or game mechanic you'd like to see, uh, certainly pass it along, and I will put it into consideration. All right, guys, that's it from me. I will see you in the next tutorial series. Thank you so much for watching.